So uh, welcome, welcome to another uh, video, guys. We are at WBC this weekend, and we are currently with sitting with Ryan Heilman and Dave Shaw. Uh, if you'll remember, this time last year we talked about Brave Little Belgium, which debuted from Holland Spiel. Wasn't it in March, April? Yeah, earlier than that. It was okay. in uh, February, January. February, February or early February end of January of this January, year. Mm -hmm. early. Great, great intro level war game. We had a lot of fun with it. We reviewed it, had a good time. So we wanted to hook up with Ryan and Dave and talk about it's not Brave Little Belgium 2. It is an expansion and a growth upon that called White Eagle Defiance. So I will turn it over to Ryan and Dave to talk a little about the game and then we'll get into some Q&A. Okay. Um, yeah, this is uh, White Eagle Defiant. This is our, our new game here. Um, it is in prototype state. Uh, we do not currently have a publisher for it, um, but we're getting near to completion on it, and we'll at that point submit it to uh, uh, publishers. Um, it is, as Dave said, kind of... Uh, the big brave, brother. Big brother. Big yes. brother of Brave Little Brave Little Belgium. Belgium. Brave yeah, little it's Belgium. grown up a little bit. Yes. Exactly. And then, a little more sophisticated. Yeah. yeah. And which makes sense. Um, given that this is now World War II, uh, this is um, Poland, 1939. Uh, this is the uh, the German invasion of Poland. Mm -hmm. um, it required a little bit more sophistication. Yeah. You're going to have um, additional units in this game. Uh, the previous game, you only had. Infantry, cavalry. Now we're going to throw in the tanks. Mm -hmm. We're going to have some panzers and whatnot in here. Um, we have some issues as regards to the fact of the Soviet involvement and when do they get involved and how they get involved and that sort of thing in this game. Um, it is a game in which, for the first part of it, the Germans are going to be involved. They're going to be trying to push through. Um, into Poland, try to take over as many victory cities as possible in Poland, try to eventually get to the capital in Warsaw. Uh, while at the same time, the uh, Polish army is trying to push them back, trying to liberate those cities, uh, trying to hold uh, the Germans off. Um, the big difference between this game and the other game is that in uh, Brave Little Belgium, the British and the French were always eventually going to come back. Mm -hmm. In this game, it's not so certain that the Soviets are going to come into the game. We have a little track down here at the bottom that kind of simulates how well the Polish are doing, how well the Germans are doing. If the Germans are doing really well, hey, the Soviets are eventually going to come in. If the Polish are doing well, the Soviets are going to say, no, I'm not going to get involved. Um, so after the 17th, September 17th to 20th, if any time thereafter, the victory marker is up here, that means the Germans are doing well, mm -hmm. the Soviets will then get involved in the game. Um, and to kind of expand on what Ryan was saying as far as pointing at this, uh, this, this chart here, so victory points also play a bigger role in this game. Well, actually, they play a role in this game, whereas in Great right. Belgium... It was either either you, or not. Right. You, you had to destroy two forts and get your units across the, the, the line. Here, it's more about capturing cities, destroying forces, and making sure that as the German player, you get this victory point marker up as high as you can. And as the Polish player, keeping it back to prevent the German player from winning. So the idea is that it's more victory point based yep. than Great Little And victory points come from capturing victory point cities. The green cities here on the map. Yeah. There, there are a few different ways you can get victory points. Um, there's these little green cities um, that will give you victory points. So as a German, if I come in, I take one of these cities, obviously I'm going to go up. If the Polish were to come back in, liberate that city, you're going to lose a victory point. If the Polish are brave enough and they want to try to come into East Prussia here and try to destroy some of these forts, hey, that's morale victory for them. That's great for them. They can get victory points there as well. Um, there are a possibility of 15 victory points. Most of the cities are worth one. Warsaw is worth three. It's a little bit more valuable. Um, if you are at nine victory points, and it's the Germans at this date, at the end of this date, you win. Draw. At the end of the state, below that, the Polish win. There is a deduction that the Polish can cause as well. If the Polish start taking infantry and start retreating down here into Romania, then that's going to start reducing the victory at the end of the game. 
So say you are down here at nine, but you have one force, you're going to get a negative one, you're going to lose that game. Those forces are going to go off into France and other places to, to fight in war. The other little wrinkle in this game is that we also have the ability for the allies to get involved in the game. In a, they're not, you're not going to see allied forces coming in, obviously, but what's going on with France on the other side? If they see that the, the Polish are doing well and they're winning victory after victory, by the ninth, if they're up here, the Germans are going to have to take negative one on a die roll or negative two on a die roll, depending on where they are. And we decided that because rather than pulling forces off the board to say, hey, they're going to the West, that shows instead that you know assets like air power and concentration of forces are being shifted so they're west. they're just not and, as effective. Right, right. So it's okay. it's imperative for the German yeah. player. You, you got to start getting victory points early. Or, you know, the, the French might yeah. do more than they did historically. Yeah. And one thing that we left out of this game, and <laughs> yeah. Dave and I have a lot of conversation about this, and, but we decided to leave it out, is atrocities. Oh, yeah. Because, yeah. you know, there is the atrocity in, in Brave Little Belgium, and right. the atrocities in this war were, as we know, horrendous. Yeah. And we talked about, you know, is there any way to include that in? You know, are we whitewashing it too much by not including it in? And we just could not come up with a way that made sense. I mean, I didn't want the Germans to be allowed as a player to then commit those atrocities. It felt yeah. really uncomfortable to me. Yep. So I tried to make it more of an abstract way to do it, and it just didn't work. So if you notice over here, it doesn't say atrocities. It says Blitzkrieg Breakdown. Um, the Blitzkrieg at this point was still in its testing stage. Mm -hmm. It was not the Blitzkrieg of France later on. So they weren't sure whether this was going to work or not. So as you're picking chits, if you don't pick south of the north chit, by the end of the turn, okay. you notice in this one there's four turns. Yep, four turns in a, in a day. Yeah, it's four, four, days, four days per turn. Exactly. So three, right. um, if you don't pull it, you then can move your forces. You can force them to move, but you have to roll in the Blitzkrieg bracket. It's the same roll. One to three, you're fine. Forces move in. Four to six, you have a breakdown. Okay. You have some sort of command breakdown or equipment breakdown right. or whatever. And if you then move that up, you have that breakdown, I'm now moving, my, say, my south in, they're going to move at a negative one and a negative firing. one for firing. Okay. And as with the atrocities in Brave Little Belgium, mm -hmm. if you hit five before the, the game is over, that it's, it's a loss for the German player, yes. and that represents the fact that you perform so poorly that the Blitzkrieg mechanism is, you know, basically thrown out the window. Right. Or, by the time it, it's it's for a historical you know looking ahead that when it comes time to invade France, the Germans are going to do it very differently than right. the way they did. That's correct. The Maginot Line for right, five right. Years it's, or in like other that. words, it's basically the Blitzkrieg did not work the way Got they it. wanted. Okay, so, yeah. that's interesting. Leadership yeah. loses faith in that. Right, right. Something right. different. It's Such just yeah. It, yeah, it'll be handicapped for the Germans. Yeah. So this is a chip pool, chip pool, chip pool mechanic, just like Brave Little Belgium. Yes, sir. What type of do you have events we that are do. thrown in there? We do have some yeah. different events. like the events. Yeah. Okay. So um, a little bit different with the events, and I you won't be able to see these, but I will yell them out to you right, as right. I see them. Some of the events are similar. So a sabotage for the Polish, you know, the burning of the bridges and whatnot. Makes movement. Minus one to move. That makes complete you know, sense. Um, this one though is new. Let's give the Polish a plus one for their armored trains. Okay. So armored trains played a, a big role in the Polish defense. Okay. And uh, other than the fact you can't take a Polish train outside of Poland, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can pretty much use them anywhere for any type of attack. Okay. So, um, so it gives a plus one for that round, that attack. One combat. One particular one combat. combat. Yep. Yep. Usable in any place in Poland. Got That's it. right. Yeah. <laughs> you can't bring it out. That's why we were Russia saying, yeah. 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 I don't think the Germans would have really been too fond of letting the Polish sure. you know, use their rare words. So. Um, here's another interesting point. Um, Luftwaffe. So Luftwaffe obviously played a key part in this. I did not want to include specifically the Air Force in any way in counters, but we have uh, more of an interdiction type force here. So a negative one to Polish move. It's kind of the reverse yeah. of the sabotage. Makes it harder to move in the open, so they have to be right. more right. cautious. And that's a lot of what they did, bombing railroads, bombing yep. uh, roads, that sort of thing. In a sense, this is the German equivalent of sabotage. Yep. Yep. But it also has another 
Yes. Right. If you remember in Belgium, there was Big Bird, mm -hmm. which could fire back against the forts. Yeah. Well, there's your firing back against the okay. forts if the forts decide to take a shot. Support, right. Yeah. All right. Um, Blitzkrieg. Obviously, Blitzkrieg is a big deal. We had the Blitzkrieg takedown, but this is another counter, which gives you a plus one to combat, mm -hmm. which is great. In addition, regardless of the size of your stack as the Germans, if you go and face another stack and you eliminate, you do eliminate all theirs and don't take any, uh, take any losses, yeah. you can get an automatic advance. Okay. I mean, there is a way to get automatic advance anyway, which is a three to one ratio. Here it's three to one losses. rather than five to one. Is yep, it's the other one. But this yep. is a little bit more advantageous. I mean, I can bring one yeah. Panzer in, do well, and push them back, yeah. etc. Cetera, et cetera. Um, we decided to add more planes. We just like planes. Uh -huh. And we wanted to have good, uh, some additional plus ones. Um, we originally, we did, originally had forced march in here, mm -hmm. and it didn't make sense for this well, time here. Well, it's great, so we kind of like, well, it's already right. forced. Right, so, right. Yeah. So we did a little research on some other types of things. And let's get the Stukas in, mm -hmm. a plus one. On any combat. On, on any, any combat. combat. No, no restrictions. restrictions. Okay. okay. And then the Polish planes, despite rumor, mm -hmm. despite legend, well, did better yeah, than not that. Yeah. Not that. Right. Right. Particularly Most the Most people think that the Polish Air Force didn't play a part, but actually the Polish Air Force, I forget, it shot down a good number of It did. So it was effective, so we gave them a chip as well. Okay. Same yeah. thing as the Skuka. Plus, Plus one, one on any kind of combat. Yeah, the little monoplane, the, the PZL P11. Yeah, okay. So, um, so they also get a plus one. Yeah, a little hard to see how they did well against uh, modern German aircraft, but they did. They, they, they did hard. better Lots than Lots of hard. Mm -hmm. it, it was, and that's really, it, it, and I think that you just captured the key with this. It's the same with the, the Brave Yeah, Belgium. you're defending your home. It's the idea of the big guy versus the yeah. David versus Goliath. So we have, you know, even number of events, three and three. Okay. On both sides. Um, we do have an addition an automatic victory for the Germans, which is a little different. You always have to, in that other game, do the various things. Yeah. If you're doing really well and you get to the point where you have 12 victory points, end of the turn, Mercy win. you win. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's, you're, too, it's too much, too It's fast. too much, you're done. Much. You can't recover. Yeah. 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 And that's, that's the game. Okay. The, and the intern markers, has that changed at all? Um, they are that, the I like same. That There's four of There's them now four as opposed to three. Okay. But basically, it's the same thing. And as we described with the Blitzkrieg breakdown, German player. If they, if he doesn't, they want roll, to push forward. Right, then you can roll do that. and activate. Yeah, um, that's I like that. One different thing here, though, is that the uh, German events only apply to Germany. Soviets don't get any benefits from okay. the Obviously, the Soviets weren't using Blitzkrieg, and right. you know, so this way that gives the Germans, in particular, benefits. Uh, the Soviet benefit is just that there's a lot of them, mm -hmm. and when they do enter. You know, as I, we were talking earlier, the, the Germans have only two activations as opposed to three for the Polish. Okay. Uh, but that's in the beginning. Once the Soviets enter, then it flips. The German side has four activations as opposed to three for the, the uh, Polish. Right. So. It well, kinda, man, that really accounts for the Soviets coming in. They get a couple of active right. regions, but now, the German players still playing at all. Like Ryan said, you know, historically they came in on the 17th, and if you're right. above, and, and this may not be three, we may change yeah, it. May have but the point is, is that the Polish player knows that they have a slight advantage early yeah. on. But when the Soviets arrive, you know, yeah. it's... Uh, I don't want to say game over because that's not necessarily right. true, but well, it's, it's going to get a lot harder for Poland. They got to make hay while the sun shines. Exactly. And if they don't get a good enough, you know, it's going to be hard to hard to win for them because they got a second wave coming in. And, yeah. and the other thing that's a little different here, and I think this really is a, a reflection of the difference between World War One and World War Two, stacking. Uh, here, the stacking is by type, not by numbers. Okay. So a space can have one infantry. One cavalry, one panzer, or a mechanized unit. And the reason behind that is to kind of show that this is a war of combined arms. That's what Blitzkrieg really was. Um, there's a couple of 
exceptions to that. I think in forts you can in forts um, you can do up to four. Up to four, but it still has to be different types. Right. So you can have a fort and an infantry and a so armor or something like that. That's both. It's both a handicap and a. a a plus because it's a handicap because you can't big, have a big pile of panzers roaming around yeah. the Polish countryside. But on the other hand, you have to really think through, okay, where am I going to use a panzer and a infantry as opposed to, okay, this is where I just want to take infantry. Yeah. Uh, Which leads us to the panzers and the cavalry. Uh, right, yes, there is one more little bit of chrome here. Okay. We yeah. forgot about that. Yes, we did forget about um, so, the cavalry, the Polish cavalry, the, the Very famed, infamous, yeah, yeah, the famed Polish yeah. cavalry, um, and infamous because a lot of people again perceive, you know, oh, the cavalry went running in against the Panthers and got slaughtered. Not that was not true. It did happen a couple times, but the Polish cavalry was actually very good. They they had several successes against the Germans in the field. So, but we, yeah, right, yeah, right. not superstars. Not They're superstars. not carrying a, no. a gun on there. Right. You know. So, so what we did was we made them one-sided, okay. where they're rolling at fives or sixes depending on the strength. But they get an initial hit that the other side can't counter out. Okay. So if I'm a cavalry, I hit a five or six, you got to flip one of your units immediately. Okay. You can fire back later, but you're going to fire back weekend. Got it. If, if you ever played Axis and Allies, it's like the sub first shot. Yeah, right, right. You take the hit, you take it out, then combat starts. Exactly. Then combat starts. Okay, so that's the way you kind of model the effectiveness of cavalry. Polish cavalry. They, they get a hit. It's taken before combat, right. yep. and then, then regular that combat. unit may not get to fire back or fire back weekend. Exactly. Okay, right. very good. And then for Panzers. Panzers, we obviously want to simulate something special for them, so they get to roll two dice instead of one. Okay. Okay? They're they're hitting, depending, I mean, these guys are hitting on fives. Right. You know, I roll, oh, yeah. I got a six. I got yeah. a six and a two. You got a, well, you missed. I missed. But if I, got, I rolled, if you roll two, you know, two fives. Oh, five, two fives. Two hits. It's two hits. <laughs> nice. Two yes. fives, two sixes, that's two hits. Yeah, Otherwise, okay. you at least have to hit on one. Yeah. With the only caveat being that with forts, obviously, all the both cab and the uh, panzers lose that effect. Okay. Because they're in more of an infantry role. Right. Rather right. Than so panzers hit on a. Uh, they vary a little bit. They vary a little bit. There's These a are fives. fives. Some are fours. I think there's a four right there, okay, just depending. Sixes. You know, the tenth was much stronger yep. than the fourth, etc., okay. etc. Et so, um, yeah, I mean, that's a pretty high uh, percentage. Absolutely. Two fours. So does combat still work the same way? Meaning, it's one round. Yes. Yes, sir. And that combat will linger until the next turn or even the next day. Um, it depends. Um, so if I am attacking yep, in a non-fortress space, yeah, yeah. Right. If, I, if, if I'm the fourth and I'm coming in here and I'm attacking Posden yep. and they push me back, yeah, I'm going to have to retreat and then if I want to come back in the next yep. time, and, and the I'd have same, to come back in. Uh, the same rules apply. Okay. Uh, winner is whoever takes more laws, uh, gives, you know, inflicts more laws. Inflicts more losses. Draws always go to defend. Okay. So, that's what I was, that's the I was trying to remember how to say that. Right, yeah. right. No, but you're right about the, the difference with um, forts. Right. Mm -hmm. So if I go and attack that fort, and I do successfully, and I maybe I have a hit on that fort, but he's still there. Yep. I'm going to hang out there, and I'm going to continue to siege right. that till the next round. Next, the next round. round. I notice you don't have the siege boxes. Couldn't fit them right. Couldn't yet. fit them. Yeah. Okay. That right. is for a designer Hopefully to take. We'll have a, right, right. Yeah. Figure out how to a really good right. designer okay. to take and figure other, out how to fit everything. Yeah. In. yeah. There you go. The other thing we'd like to do is have the names outside of the boxes. Got it. But Got again, it. it's a, as you can see, it's a little more involved yep. here. Yep. So, well, like you said, it seems like there's some different different types of units. There's more exceptions. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's great, though. I, I like that chrome of you know the Panzers and that cavalry, and I think that's going to really ramp this one up. One of the things I loved about Brave Gel Belgium was you know the chip pool is very exciting, very fun. Yes. You're biting your nails, hoping, oh my gosh, I don't want to end the turn. Or if you're the Belgians, you're like, please draw that yes. into the turn. <laughs> um, so I love that chip pull part and. 
movement rules, are they pretty much the same? I know there's no jagged lines. But I have some double doubles. Lines. Doubles are, yeah, there's not many. That's uh, Those are harder to move across? Two, two movement two points. Movements, okay. but, uh, movement so pretty points, much the same there. Yeah, infantry moves two, panzers and cav move four. Okay, and the significance of the dotted line, I don't know that we talked about that. That is the Nazi-Soviet ribbon prop. So it's uh, the historical. Yes, okay. and basically the Germans can ignore it until the Soviets come in. Okay. Once the Soviets come in, the Germans have to get to the uh, to the west of it, okay. and the Soviets basically are free to operate. Okay. Uh, and they can only operate to, to the, yeah. that side of it. Right. Um, the only other movement restrictions is for these poor little Slovakians down yeah. here. Uh -huh. um, you know, they got to try to get through the passes in the mountains. That's yeah. part, part so of why it's only, tough. They can only move two points away from okay. Slovakia. Okay. You know, they're not up here trying to take. Yeah, the we're, now. we're not having the Slovaks march on. Warsaw. They're all in that area. Right I mean, I'm there. Czech, so I have a little, you know, <laughs> uh, but they weren't that. Yeah. Okay. They're, 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 and they're part of Army Group Sound. Got it. So. Playtime. How long does this one play? About two little, hours? Uh, I would say about an hour and a half. Okay. Yeah. You know, it is definitely longer. Yep. Yeah. We, we did Brave Old Belgium about 40, 45. That's, yeah, that's almost now. always under an hour. Yeah. I think this would be more between hour and hour and a half. Okay. Unless, you know, you do some spectacularly bad rolling right, and right. You know, things go wrong. Hey, but that may happen. Uh, which I do a lot. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, hour, hour and a half is... Okay. Two hour, maybe first play, you're getting yeah. the rules. Yeah. Yep. Trying to Just remember all the exceptions. The, the differentials. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it is that step up. Yeah. yeah. Right. You know, it's that uh, next level. Yeah. yeah. Right. What are you guys most proud of about this design? Hmm. What do you feel it does really well? Well, what I'll say, and I'll say this before yeah, Ryan does, this, this was originally Ryan's concert, and he presented it to me, and we started playing it. And when before we first, or after Brave Little Bowl? Uh, after. 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 Okay. It was after, yeah. Well, see, Dave... When he came up with Brave Little Belgium, he actually had three additional ideas. Okay. He had an idea um, called Transylvania Tragedy, which was another World War One. Yes. Uh, the Romanian campaign Romanian in 1916. Campaign. Yeah. He had an idea about um, um, the Harrisburg uh, campaign in Civil War, yeah. and as well as the Italian Franco Front um, right. in, yeah. in World War II. Right. And I actually started putting together the Transylvania tragedy one, the Romanian one. I thought World War One makes sense, yeah. it'll be easy. I could put, you know, I already did. Oh, it was incredibly difficult. Yep. Uh, the length of time didn't work, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I started looking and seeing what could work. Yeah. And I said, well, start of World War One, start of World War Two. David Goliath. Yep. Yep. Poland. So I said, let's do Poland, and I started proposing it. I started putting some stuff together, and Dave's yes. reaction. So at first, I was kind of skeptical that this uh, this topic. I mean, there aren't a lot of games out there on the Polish campaign of World War II. Right. And pretty much because most people see that the Polish campaign is the speed bump, so that we can get to the better part of the you know yep. the fun part of World War II. Uh, but. So at first I was kind of like, well, all right, you know, I'll, I'll give it a try and we'll see how it goes. Every time we've played this, and with each successive play, I find myself liking this game more and more. Okay. I'm enjoying it more and more. The fact that it's Poland in World War II doesn't bother me anymore because just like Brave Little Belgium, between the chip pull, the events, and the fact that you have to roll dice, yeah. This can have, again, it's historical, it's not an ahistorical game, yeah. but you're going to get some really crazy stuff and some fun, you know, fun things can happen, yeah. and every play is different. We've had games where, where we've played and the Germans don't even get, you know, two-thirds of the way into Poland. Mm -hmm. We've had other games where I took everything in Poland except for right. Warsaw. Got it. So the fact that there's just so many ways the game can play. The variability, for it's, sure. It's, and... It is fun. I, I right. feel like I get the fun factor from this that I got from Brave Little Okay. Well, very good. And what about you, Ryan? Well, I think that I'm most proud of this, this victory track. Okay. Um, I this is pretty interesting. Yeah. I always knew that I wanted to have some way to control the Soviet involvement and the Allied involvement. Mm -hmm. And so originally, this was two tracks. And it, you, you can move the Allied involvement track, you can move the Soviet involvement track, and you had to count the victory at the end. And I didn't like it, mm -hmm. but I wanted to figure out how to get it all to work. And then I said one day, I was I was watching a video online. I, mm -hmm. I can't even remember who it was. It was, it was probably one of Tom Russell's, probably. Uh -huh. But I was watching some video online. And I can't remember what it was. And they were talking about a game. I looked at it and I went, 
that's interesting. Well, that would work. Yeah. Let's do something with a victory track. And um, I combined them together, victory track, so you keep track of it during the game with the Soviet involvement, with the Allied involvement. Yeah. Streamlining. Yeah. And well, I there's was that very... ebb and flow. You, yep. know, you, you gain two or three, and I'm going to knock you back to one or two. And I, I really like the way you've tried to incorporate the Allies and the I think Soviets. His, I think that's I neat. think his, his idea with the Soviets and the Allies is awesome. Yeah. Because rather than hardwire the Soviets, there is a possibility that if you're not doing good as the Germans, they're not coming. Yeah. yeah. And conversely, if you're not doing good as the Germans, you also face the prospect of the French doing more than they did before. Right, right. That's great. Well, we appreciate your time. I did want to invite uh, Tom Russell no, to have a seat. Maybe that's why I Tom. thought it was a Tom Russell video. Over. There he is. <laughs> we have about three minutes to wrap up on, on our segment, but uh, Tom hasn't picked up White Eagle Defiant yet, right, as a publisher, but I wanted to invite Tom in, and what do you think of this game? It, it, am I black? I'm black. Yeah, you're right there. You're right uh, there. <laughs> uh, so they were showing me the game uh, earlier uh, this morning, and it's it's very exciting, and uh, we're we're very interested in seeing the, the finished uh, product. It feels like a Holland Spiel title, Tom. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, the boss isn't here. Oh well, there you go. So, yeah, she, she's at home. She's at home. Well, guys, Hi, yeah, <laughs> thanks a lot. Thanks for uh, li watching us today. David, Ryan, thank you for your time. Another great, great looking game. I really look forward to what you guys are going to do in the future, too. I feel like since Tom's here, we have to end this in a very special way. Okay. I think we have to say, dinosaurs, everybody. <laughs>